afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Tilson Live. It is Tuesday. It is two o'clock. We are live on YouTube, live on Facebook, coming at you as we do each and every single Tuesday to answer all of your questions about building a home on your land. I am one of your hosts, Eric Allard, part of the fourth generation of the Tilson family, joined as I am each and every single week by Don Dancer, Vice President of Marketing and Customer Experience at Tilson Homes. Good afternoon, Don. Hey, Eric. How's it going? It's fantastic. It's beautiful. The great weather. It's it's proper winter weather here. It's, you know, high of like 68, sunny. It basically feels like California, even though we all know it's not. But Ew. it's one of those seven days where, where all is good. Beautiful weather. But yeah, no, it's awesome. It's uh, But may, most importantly, it's Tuesday. It's two o'clock and it is mm -hmm. time to talk to all of our folks. So everybody jump in. Tell us where you're building, where you're watching from, what part of the process that you are in. We want to hear from you, our friends on Facebook, our friends on YouTube, both of you on Vimeo. You're welcome to jump in and talk to us as well. Um, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Jump in. Um, as we talk about each and every single week, there are no, the, there are, there are bad questions. There's dumb questions. Even there are dumb, bad questions. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that you don't ask. Those are the dumb, bad questions. The dumb, bad questions are the ones you don't ask. So ask anything. And and by the way, oh, spoil, spoil, I screwed it up. I messed up the whole thing. While people were going to be jumping in and telling us where they're watching from, where they're building part of the process they're in, Don is going to be telling us what we're talking about today. Don, what are we talking about today? But you blew it. <laughs> you take one week off. Eric spoiled right it. Um, I know that's what it is. Like like Jason's saying, you know, a, a, a Tuesday without a Tilson live is a Tilson waste. Is a Tuesday wasted? Um, <sighs> we are we are out of practice, guys. We are rusty. Uh, but we are here for our favorite topic, all about you guys. It is it is ask us anything. Um, so wherever you are in the process, whatever you are curious about with building on your land, I mean, you you can ask us about anything at all. Just our opinions get less reliable the further away from from our key topic you get. Uh, but whatever part of the process you're in, you got questions about financing, you have questions about design, you have questions about directions to one of our design centers. We are we are here to help you. Uh, we can tell you what a construction drive is. We can tell you how to get one. We can tell you who's going to give the permit for your cohort. Uh, where, whatever you are in the process, we are here to answer all of your questions about building on your land in Texas. That's exactly right. So if you need to talk financing, if you need to talk septic systems, if you need to talk appraisals, if you need to talk equity equity calculations don can do all those if you want to talk about <laughs> anything related to design customization custom options that's what we're here for folks we're going to answer all of your questions can, how much can you change what energy code do you build to all that stuff is why we are here for you truly today is ask us anything i see okay so we got we got some oh it's fat tuesday don you should know that it is fat tuesday it is yep, it is yep, yes so, um Yep. All right, Misty. Like, yeah, this is the, so that was that was the Sumners. There we go. Speaking French. French I'm not even gonna try from the Sumners. <laughs> uh, building our Magnolia and Bridal Gate in Bandera. Oh. Mardi Gras in Bandera is the second best Mardi Gras experience to the original. Oh, okay. I did not know Bandera had Mardi Gras. So that's good to know. Yeah, I knew Galveston had one. Oh, and I'm, yes. I'm sure that's not the original. What what are which which one do you call the original? Oh, because there's a little dispute about that, by the way. There's a little dispute mm -hmm. about that. Uh, obviously, New Orleans, they want to talk about them being the original. But I do believe that Mobile, Alabama claims to be the original. Uh, so anyway, I, I don't know that we're going to settle that dispute here today. But hey, dispute it nonetheless. Let's do this. So throw it in there. We, we enjoy a good battle. Let's go. Yep. yep. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we sure do. Particularly if it doesn't involve us. Even better. But um, jump in again. Tell us where you're watching from, where you're building, what part of the process you are in. We've got some things that we can talk about, but truly today is ask us anything. So questions about septic systems, questions about electricity, utilities, power. You know, how do you get all those things there? Who do you talk to? Like Don was saying about permits, all that stuff that um, we need to talk about. That's why we're here. So ask all of those yeah. things. Jump in. Christian is saying Cowboy Mardi Gras in Bandera. Nothing tops the hurricane in Sazerac in Nola. Yeah, yeah. except the second one. So, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, I, I, I've not been to, I have one experience uh, at Mardi Gras in New Orleans. And fortunately, I was part mm -hmm. of an ROTC 
unit that was leading in the Rex parade. So we, it was obviously highly discouraged, in fact, prohibited from participating in any shenanigans. Um, and we were staying on a Marine troop carrier in the Mississippi River Delta. So it was probably the perfect experience for a college kid in New Orleans. Um, yeah. So I had, I'm going to take this off because that's the most I can do to the hat. Dallas, shout out for the hat, but that's, that's the most I can do. Um, so I had many college experiences in Mardi Gras, uh, in, in Mardi Gras and I'm really? very glad that social media did not exist at that time. Yeah, yeah. Grateful for that as well. So it's deep. Okay, so and Christian says he, he hopes he hopes you remember more of his than he does. Yeah, I remember every minute of it. Yeah, uh, that was we, we didn't get to participate in the shenanigans. So. My my most vivid memory of a New Orleans Mardi Gras was walking down Bourbon Street, getting to the middle of the street, and realizing that my feet were not on the ground because the crowd it was so tight that the crowd had actually bowed. So we were walking about that far off the air. They're doing you a solid because I do remember the street, uh, of Urban Street and the, and the surrounding blocks. And yeah, my shoes were probably in much better condition yeah. because of it. But when I looked down to the ground, the panic attack began, and I was like, "We we must get out of here now, <laughs> right now." Yeah, so we were we were uh, the Ross Volunteer Company wore all white uniforms, white pants, white. Jackets, white everything except shoes. Shoes were black, thankfully, but uh, white hats, white gloves, and it um, from about the middle shin down. Not so much white, not so much white anymore. But cool no. experience. Glad I got to do it. Um, glad it's in the past. And here we are <laughs> on Tilton Live. Here we talking are about all things building on your land. Hey, Misty. And Misty has news. Hello from Mansfield, building the San Jacinto in Hood County. We are basically dried in, just missing the garage doors and shingles. Awesome. So you're, you were fully cool. dried in then. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome. That is awesome. All right. So, yes, folks, obviously jump in where you're watching from, where you're building, what part of the process you're in. We are live on YouTube, live on Facebook. Want to hear from you. Want to help you in this journey. Want to clear obstacles out of the way, get you some security locked in there. We want to hear anything that you're thinking about, that you got questions about. We want to talk about those things. So lay it on us. That's what we're here for. All right. We've got Jorge saying bonjour from Jorge. Belgium. Um, been talking to Jennifer G and she's been great. Um, just like all the team at Tilson. Been interested in the Polidoro and wanted mm -hmm. to know if a media room downstairs in lieu of an upstairs bonus space is feasible in addition to the fourth bedroom option. So yeah, it would. that's a great question. It would need to be in addition to. So, uh, but yeah, I know that both the, the Preston and the Polidoro we can pull off a media room downstairs. They're bit, they're large one-story homes, um, so they do lend themselves to that. We can make that happen. Um, but again, it would need to be in addition to that, that fourth bedroom. We have to add some footage on there to make that happen. But I've seen I've seen customers do that. So great question. Right. So awesome, great. So it sounds like as long as a lot's big enough, we can do it. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a big wide house for sure. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting because I've seen some that have um, minimums these days on the width. So, you know, a lot of the places oh, really? where, people, where people are building, um, they actually have maximums, obviously, because you get building lines. But I've seen, right, one, yeah. and I think Republic Grand Ranch does this to some degree. And I know that um, uh, there's a new place, the Cedars, that just recently opened doing on your lot type of construction, selling to the end user. And I saw advertised it's a 2,500 square foot minimum and mm -hmm. 65 foot width home minimum. In other words, what they don't want is you know, so they're selling you an acre or two lot. They don't want you building a, a skinny house that doesn't look scale um, on that right. of land. So uh, I've seen that it's, it's a fairly new restriction that I've started seeing because it's it's definitely against the the norm. Uh, most most developers, broadly speaking, across the U.S., they try to pack in as many lots as possible onto a tract of land because that increases the number of lots they can sell. Um, the builders typically go along with that, right? Because same thing, more homes they can sell. But, and we're, we're seeing more and more and the people leaving that, including the developers, because we got space here in Texas to do it, is mm -hmm. they actually have a, a width minimum on the house. It, thou shalt build a minimum 60 foot wide, 65 foot wide house. So just, yeah. Another, we see new restrictions, it seems, all the time. Something new every yeah. day. 
Well, I mean, that makes sense when you think about it. Like someone who's never built um, on that type of acreage or space before, it doesn't, it doesn't even occur to them because we, we actually did have some customers reaching out for us asking about, um, they liked a plan that a builder was doing in, it was like a 40 foot wide. And I was like, um, you don't want to put that yeah. on a two and a half acre lot. It's, it's going to look like a toy. Yeah. Like it's just, it's just going to look wrong. So. See, a lot like if you look at our portfolio, we get questions sometimes about, well, do you have any plans to have the garage and then living spaces above the garage or the front of the house? I'm like, well, no, because that's what you build when you have a 50 foot wide lot. You have to right. put everything up in there and do that. Our customers don't need to do that. And most of them don't want to do that. Um, they want to, uh, they, they want to build out. They are typically, um, it's not their first home. Most of them, that's mm -hmm. not exclusive but most of them have the first home and they they're kind of planning around that aging in place idea of hey i don't want to have to go up the stairs to like do stuff if my grandkids want to go up there to just the bonus space fine i can go up there once a week once every other week and vacuum it and you know wipe down the, the dust off the bathroom counter but beyond that i don't really want to be going up and down stairs um in the long term you know mm -hmm. so that's that's a request that we get and, and again just just Something to think about when you're planning, you know, your forever home of where you want things to be. And again, with the media room downstairs, go back to that question to start with is, is a really, really cool idea. Yeah, absolutely. All right. We've got Joseph who's asking, hey, I'm looking to build in Liberty County. Are there any floor plans offering a wraparound porch? Great news is we can put a wraparound porch on just about any plan, Joseph. So. Mm -hmm. We can, uh, you know, initially we try to keep the prices competitive um, on the website. So that's why you're going to see that we don't have a whole bunch that have, you know, 600 square feet of porch wrapping around it. Um, but we've certainly done it on many, many homes, anywhere from, you know, 1600 square feet all the way up to 3,500 square feet. We've done wraparound porches and, it, you know, the wraparound can mean a couple of different things. In other words, you can 360 around the house. That's an option. Mm -hmm. It's an expensive option, but it is an option. Um, and what we see done most of the time is kind of where it comes across the front and then maybe returns back three, four, five, or 10 feet down each side and terminates there. Just enough to get that kind of look that you're going for, farmhouse type of look uh, that you can get done with, with. And sometimes we see it where it just wraps around one side. You know, it really just depends on what your budget is, kind of where you want to spend those dollars. So, uh, but, but we can we can do that on just about any home. Yeah, I think the, my favorite one that I've seen where we've done something like that, I, I want to say it was the Span family with their Gonzalez that did that wraparound. Yes, mm -hmm. it was them. Um, I'll drop the link to you for that, Joseph, but they did a really cool kind of wraparound porch concept on their Gonzalez home. It was absolutely beautiful. Awesome. And then we've got Brittany saying, hey, we're building in Republic Grand Ranch. I have a couple of questions. Uh, first, what kind of credit do you offer if we're wanting to do our own electrical underbrushing, et cetera? Is there a certain percentage you base price or set price you work with? And the second is, do we offer dual fireplaces? Okay, so let's let's tackle those one at a time. Um, so on the electrical, let's let's talk there first. And I, so I want to be sure, Brittany, that we get the question answered right. So on the electrical, are we, are we talking about you want to do like the underground utilities from when it's done and you hook it all up. Um, Cause we can, you know, the, the office in Texas Grand Ranch has pricing on that. They can work that credit up for you if you want to do that instead of us doing it. Um, underbrushing, same thing. They, they have that number. The underbrushing isn't a whole, whole lot, um, but it is something that is going to have to be done uh, before you get a proper stakeout. Uh, and then on, okay. So everything on the electrical, that's, that's actually going to need to be case by case. We don't ordinarily let customers do their own electrical work um, for insurance reasons, for warranty reasons. So that would need to be something we run through our construction department. Um, and obviously you got to be licensed. You got to be insured. Our insurance company requires a certain amount of insurance. I think a million or $2 million of GL policy um, that you have to have. And then we need to see work. Um, so I'm not saying it's completely out of the realm of possibility. I am saying that that's, that's not a, uh, we wouldn't have just a number ready to go on that because HVAC, electrical, plumbing, foundation, framing, roofing, these are things that we don't, we don't have a, a track record of having customers do themselves. Um, so I'm sorry, I can't give you an accurate number on what that credit would be, but 
there could be a path to doing that. The underbrushing and that that that's something we can definitely we don't we don't have to do that for you. But the the electrical, so the actual running electrical wire, hooking up the house, all that stuff is is something that we would definitely need to run through our construction department. But the team in Texas Grand Ranch or in Spring, wherever you're working, could could help you uh, run that through our construction team. And they just may have some questions, want to see some of the work that's been done. Okay. okay. So, it is, so it's not a percentage. It, it is based on the, the plan. So it would be based on like if it's a well, you're Texas Grand, Republic Grand Ranch. So is it a Breckenridge or is it a Paladuro? Is it a LaSalle? You know, so obviously all of those would have different mm -hmm. prices that we pay for our base contract amount. But it would be just what's the base contract amount of that. Um, understanding that that pricing from that elect that we are going to credit back if we do something like that would be based on what that electrician gives us the price for for hundreds of houses. So we do find some customers when we do those type of things, typically it's appliances or floors. Um, they kind of sometimes will scoff at that, like, really? That's, I can barely get it done for that. Like, well, I know, but we're doing it 700 times a year. Right. So we, we expect to get competitive pricing. If not, we would <laughs> I'd be really upset uh, if, if you could do it for the same price that we could do it for. So, and then the second one was um, going a back dual to, fireplace. Do we offer dual fireplaces? Yeah. Unfortunately, the energy code has kind of put a big, hard stop on those. There are a few specialized ones I've seen, um, but it's because of the air changes per hour, the, uh, the blower door test we have to do and testing out with, it has to be five air changes per hour or less in, in Montgomery County where you're building. It's really, really difficult to get that done if you have, now I'll say that back. Room to room is is very doable. So like family room to master bedroom, something like that. Very easy to do. Plenty of fireplaces. Yeah, we're assuming by dual fireplace that you mean a two-sided. Outdoor, um, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. The, and you're talking about outdoor to indoor. That's the struggle. That's a big, big struggle um, in trying to get that done and pass energy. I don't even know any builders who are doing those anymore. Um, it, at scale. Now there might still be some, some inserts you can get that done with but for sure. Room to room. So like kitchen mm -hmm. peninsula type thing to family room or family room to bedroom. We still have those available. We can still do those all day long. Um, it's that inside to outside. What we have seen done um, is a fireplace on the inside and then maybe it backs up to a separate fireplace on the outside. It kind of looks like it would be, but you can't actually see through it. Um, those days are drawing to a, a rapid close with the energy code, unfortunately. Okay, makes sense. Um, Jesse is asking if we have our own floor plan design, will Tilson build our plan? What do we do in that case, Mrs. Dantzler? So most likely, yes. I mean, there are a few things um, that we will not do. So if you're looking at the plans on our website and what you're looking to do looks absolutely nothing like any of them. If you've got like a flat roof or you're talking total contemporary style where all of the walls are glass, that's probably not going to be something we would feel comfortable doing. Um, but as long as it's similar and something that we know we can do well and that our subcontractors can do well, we absolutely will look at your plan. Um, what's going to happen, though, when you come into our office is our consultant is going to grab one of our plans that is the most similar and start making changes um, just to give you the ballpark price, like what type of investment range you're looking at, because our team is equipped to give you prices, making all kinds of changes to our own plans. Um, so that's why they're going to do that. So we're going to take one of ours, get it as close to your plan as possible and say, this is about how much I think we're looking at to do this plan. And if you're comfortable with doing that, we'll send it all off to drafting and they'll give you the final price on that, that one that you brought in. Um, and we'll just, we'll go from there. So yeah, it's absolutely possible just as long as it's stuff that we're, we're comfortable doing. So we're going to want to take a look at it and talk, talk to you in person and talk through all of the details that may or may not be in your plan. Um, cause a lot of times if an architect does the plans, they'll, they'll include little things like molding per builder or cabinets per builder. So we're going to want to have that conversation about exactly what your expectations are with those uh, then we've got um, Shai D saying, love the webinars. I'm just beginning the process of searching for a lot in the Bolverde Spring Branch area. Um, as you know, it's very hilly out here. Yes. Um, and that, of course, is followed by a question about how much of the cost to level the area to lay foundation is factored into the cost of the home. Great question. So in, in that area, you know, in your, your Comal County or your... Um, you know, Blanco County areas was out there. Typically, we're, we're going to put 24 inches of, of out of level of drop in the footprint of the home. And we're only talking about the footprint of the home. So not the entire lot. I'm not worried about the entire lot side to side. I'm talking about just the footprint of the home. So that 60 by 40 
footprint. Um, we would typically allow include in that area 24 inches. It varies across the state. You know, it would, it's not some some areas 18, some it's 12, some it's as low as six. Like if you're building down in Aransas County, Rockport, some place like that down there, I'm not going to include 24 inches of site prep in there because you're building on flat land. So it's not necessary to be overcharging. Um, but in those areas, 24 inches typically gets it, although not always. And then what well, the good news is, Shia, is, is we will know that number before we ever drive a nail and ask you for the uh, any kind of down payment or anything like that that needs to be done. So we do find out, we do the soil test, the geotechnical, geotechnical investigation, excuse me, and the uh, engineer foundation design, we have all that information that we do have to have a, a contract in place, a deposit in place to do that. But that's the, that is the really the only unknown. Um, it is something that we could probably come out and take a look at um, if you needed us to beforehand, but that gets a little bit sticky if you don't own the land yet because um, it's trespassing. So uh, it's uh, minor, minor yeah, detail, yeah. minor detail. Um, <laughs> a little seriously here in Texas um, when you go wandering off the reservation. But all that to yeah. say that that in that you know it, we haven't found a lot of places to find I don't know any in that Spring Branch Bavaria area that we couldn't build on. Um, that's not really a thing. So um, we're very accustomed to working on the at a level site conditions like that out there. Our teams, are both at the, on the sales side and construction side, are very much in tune to what it takes to get that done. Okay, very good. Uh, we got Lance saying hello, building a San Antonio B with Board and Batten in Victoria County. The stakeout is this Friday. Awesome. That's exciting. Uh, we got Mary saying hello. Does the company have their own architect and build on your own lot? Okay. Does the company have their own? We do not have a licensed architect. No. Good news. You don't need one. And I wouldn't recommend you pay for one, quite frankly. Um, nothing is architects. They come in handy on large commercial projects. Um interfacing with engineers, interfacing with general contractors, that kind of stuff. But on a residential home, you know, this side of 10 or $12 million, there is no reason to have an architect. Uh, we do have residential designers uh, that are in-house. We have, I mean, James Sheblack, who leads our teams, been with Tilson for like 27 years, going on almost 30 years with Tilson. Um, and he was doing design and drafting before he came to us. So he and his team are well-versed in design, design aspects. We have employees in our design drafting department that they owned their own design companies. Um, and that's what they did before they came to us. So we've got a lot of resources that we can throw at, at help on getting design work done um, that interface with our sales team and our construction teams and our estimating teams and know the, you know, the how Tilson builds houses, the codes that we have to build to in, in the areas that we build. Um, and that's where sometimes we see customers get tripped up with architects um, is not, not being as familiar with not just the codes to, to a lesser degree, they typically know those, but what the trades and vendors in the area are, what are available and what's what they're capable of doing. Um, that's where we usually see people get disappointed when they use an architect is because the architect has no way to have interfaced with all the different vendors and trade partners and contractors that we'd be using on a regular basis. And so it, you know, they're speaking two different languages. Yeah. And yes, we, we build on your That's all we do. That's all we do. That's all we do. And let's see, we've got Anna saying, hi, I'm planning to build a new home in Burnett County. There's an old home already that needs to be demolished. Can I use some of the foundation cement for an outdoor patio and outdoor kitchen? Um, from that existing home, as long as it didn't touch our home in any way, yes. Uh, so if you wanted to leave a portion of that slab, which is what I, I think I'm hearing, if you want to leave a portion of the slab mm -hmm. of, of what you need to be demoed, that's fine, but it, it can't come in contact and we cannot tie into it with our new foundation. Um, and that's mainly, not mainly, it is because of the warranty. Um, we don't know anything about that foundation that was there. We do know what we're going to do with ours and there's no way that the engineer uh, or our warranty company would sign off on tying into the existing. But if you wanted to leave it there and maybe you could, you know, at some point do a future breezeway or something to it or walk to it, that'd be fine, but we would not be able to tie into it. Okay. All right. That makes sense. All right. Jorge's asking, can you please explain the Tilson Republic Grand Ranch base professional property services? Does it include septic and propane gas? If not, are there recommended contractors for these services? Okay. Well, you said the way you asked is you said base Jorge. So I'm sure I get this right. Um, we, we do have a comprehensive package for Republic Grand Ranch where it includes everything. I mean, clearing, it includes mm -hmm. landscaping, 
uh, if, if you want us to. It includes uh, underbrush, underbrushing the clearing, the septic system, the construction drive, the permanent drive, or at least I think up to 2,000 square feet of permanent drive, 100 feet of on-site water and, and electrical lines. Um, I don't believe it includes the propane, but that's if you do the Republic Grand Ranch package price. We'll be sure on that e-ticket that they prepare for you that it has that one lump sum number. If the if you opted not to have that entire lump sum number, then it's just going to be on our typical substance include, which was 50 feet of on-site sewer and water line, um, and and uh, that's really about it. So. But I mm -hmm. highly, highly recommend going with the package because um, you're going to have to do all that stuff anyway. Every bit of that stuff is going to have to be done, which is why we designed that package specifically for Republic Grand Ranch and Texas Grand Ranch so that our customers weren't late burdened with trying to go find the septic design and do this. And who do I chase down for underbrushing? And, I, and they won't do the septic design until it's underbrushed. But that person wants to do the clearing. They won't mobilize their equipment until they do. And what about the culvert construction truck? If you do ours, it's everything everything so and then and you can do it all still without doing the landscaping but again same thing i highly recommend the getting the landscaping in there too that way your drainage is set it's all all good to go all right he says thank you for the yeah. clarification the package yeah, I mean, Jorge, and it's yeah. very wise because you're gonna have to do the septic system right you're gonna have to have a construction drive you're gonna have to have a permanent drive they like the architecture control committee is going to require it um propane we have propane installers in there that yeah we can we can recommend um, that the offices there have that information and, and get that done. Okay, perfect. All right, and then we have Anna saying, hi from Katie, would like to know the benefit of using Easy Loan from Tilson or just paying cash? Don, what's the difference if they want to do our Easy Buy plan or pay cash? So the difference is is going to be essentially the the cash discount would really be be the difference, um, and then some some upfront paperwork um, is going to be the difference. So if you pay cash, uh, it's very very simple. You know you're going to get that two percent discount off of our base price. You're also not going to have to worry about any closing costs since there is no loan. So overall, it's about a three percent savings. Um, if you are paying cash and our team will get with you to do all of the, the proof of funds and set up that payment schedule for you and you would just be making payments um, as we're progressing along on your home. Um, our easy buy program um, that Tilson offers is exclusive to us and it's in place of the traditional construction loan um, that you would be using with other builders um, if for to build on your land. And um, so what we would need you to do is go ahead and we are going to get you qualified um, with a lender for a final mortgage. Um, so we're gonna, we, they'll have a third party appraisal that's done before we begin to determine exactly what the value of that house is. And we're gonna be looking for 10% equity in that amount. Even you can already, you probably, if you own the property outright, you probably already have it. Um, if not, we'll just figure out the way to make that up. And then what will happen is throughout construction, you would have no payments um, to us and Tilson would get paid at the very end um, by the mortgage company. So that's that's the difference um, with easy buy versus um, going over another builder. You would be saving you know, thousands in construction interest and fees and all of that for that construction loan. So we don't have that program um, versus cash where you, you know, you would be paying a little bit more for the house um, to keep all of your cash until you got to the end. So that's kind of kind of the difference there between those two programs. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Um, and then another Anna is asking, using your finance plan, I was informed you were offering two and a half percent. Definitely not. Um, so there must be some confusing yeah. there. No, nope, not offering two and a half percent. Um, if we are, uh, I will be refinancing my house with our financing arm. So I hate that that, uh, that was a misunderstanding there. I do know that there yeah. we are in the beginning stages of a, uh, a, a partnership you know, we've, we've seen the mortgage industry is so in, in times of turmoil, um, mergers and acquisitions run rampant, right? So rates have been high now, higher than they were um, for what, since probably June of 2022-ish. So we're, we're a year and a half into uh, higher rates than people were experiencing. And with that comes the uh, the gobbling up of, of mortgage companies, mergers, acquisitions, um, for various reasons. Some because they were doing really, really well and they're showing a lot of profit. And some because they're going to go out of business and they're going to get picked up by someone else for pennies on the dollar. So mm -hmm. um, to that end, we've seen this before and 
to make it more predictable for our customers and ourselves, quite frankly, um, in a tumultuous situation like that. We don't like it when our customers kind of get jostled around um, in those mergers and acquisitions. So we are in the stages of, of forming up a partnership with uh, and have our own. Um, it won't be under Tilson necessarily, but it will be a, a, a venture partnership of sorts where we will have one preferred lender um, and and we have control, a lot more control anyway, not total control, but a lot more control over um, mm -hmm. how they end up so that our customers don't experience things like this. And so I do know that they are going to have some incentives uh, going forward, but they will be able to speak to that more specifically. Um, and you can get their information from any of your design center consultants. Makes sense. Um, we got Chad sharing that he has six acres for sale, 30 minutes from Georgetown. If anyone is looking, um, guys, that is very rare. So go look at Chad's land. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, Belinda saying, I need to know if you will build a basement design. Our building area is sloping. Yeah. So we don't have any designs that incorporate any kind of basement or walkout basement system, uh, Belinda. I'd be very careful shopping it just like that, though, because it sloping doesn't tell it would need to be sloping like 13 feet for that to be feasible right. inside the footprint of the home. Um, and that's, and that's going to be very, very rare, not out of the realm of possibility, but it's going to be rare uh, that you're going to have enough space to have a regular floor, you know, first floor, if we will, then have enough room to get the stairs down. You need to get a floor, which is depending on the ceiling height, 12 or 12 to 15 steps. Um, and then still accommodate at least an eight foot ceiling on that, in ground or ground level, um, you're going to have a have a tremendous amount of fall on your land, and I, it, it's pretty rare we see anything like that. Aside from maybe on a lake like Lake LBJ, Lake Travis, you know, Lake Buchanan, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, outside of that, I, I can't think of an area that has enough slope to accommodate a, a true basement. Okay, makes sense. Um, Denise is asking, is there a ballpark figure for driveway and flat work? Just trying to figure out our budget in Washington. Yeah, County. I would budget around $8 a square foot. Um, get you pretty close. Cool. Um, Jennifer is sharing that they just closed on the 29th of January. Congratulations, she Jennifer. That's home. awesome. Send us pictures. That's great. Uh, we've got Joe asking, can I get a sanitary clean out added outside of the house? Um, I believe we're going to have a, I think we're going to include that when we, when we build, when we step out where the septic system goes or the sewer system is going to be, I think we have to, don't quote me on that, but I think we have to do a clean out there. Um, which, what you're speaking to is as that pipe comes out of the house, it'll be below grade, obviously. Um, there's mm -hmm. a sweeping T that comes up. So it comes out of the house, goes up. It also continues on out to the septic system or sewer system. And where it comes up there it has that little square cap looking thing that you can unscrew and it comes out. And then that you're able to, if you, if there's a obstruction of some sort, you can a plumber or even a person get in there with a snake of some sort and get that cleaned out, um, clear the obstruction. So I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a problem, Joe. I think that's something that we do. No matter what, but verify it with your uh, design center consultant and your builder. But it's it's not a hard thing to do at all. All right, um, we've got Mary asking: Are there any model homes we can visit in the Denton or Decatur area? And do you build in Sunset, Texas? So on that side of town, the Weatherford office is going to be the easiest one to get to. So yeah, we have a location in Weatherford on I twenty. Uh, I think it's exit four hundred six, if I remember right. And um, so that's. Not a problem at all. It's pretty easy to get to. Um, and yes, we do build sunsets in Montague County. And yeah, we absolutely build in Montague County. No problem. Beautiful. All right. Awesome. And then Brittany is asking, do you have a packet once in the design stage to look over and discuss at home? What do we do, Dawn? <laughs> Um, so not at, like we don't have, I'm assuming you're talking about all of the, like, I guess depends on what you mean by design phase, uh, design stage. Are you talking about picking options or are you talking about look, still looking at floor plans and all of that kind of stuff? Um, if we're, if we're talking floor plans, those, we have all of those printed out and available. You can take them home, um, from the design center and, and take a look, um, as far as choosing options and such, um, what we have, okay, so you're talking options. 
So for the options, I'm not really going to have a packet that you can take home, um, but you can spend as much time as you like um, there in our design center looking at all of the options. And then we try to share as many pictures as possible on our social media and on our website that you can kind of browse through and get ideas of, of what you like um, on that. So that's going to be the best, the best opportunity for you. But the majority of our selections are actually physically in our design centers at our offices. So you can feel free to browse around there as much as you like and, and take a look at what we offer. Um, Jorge is asking, do I need anything for Tilson to do before building a future pool in our backyard? Not really, Jorge. But there's there's some things to consider, like uh, location of the electrical panel is a good one. Um, location of the electrical panel is pretty important. Location of the septic system um, is pretty important because there's some parameters there or how close it can be to a pool or pool equipment or things like that. Also, you don't want it to be you know, obstructed uh, in between where your pool equipment is going to be and where the electrical panel is going to be. So just kind of a little bit of future planning, not a whole lot of, of like easy access to electrical panel for uh, the pool equipment. Excuse me. And then the, um, you know, I, I'm not a, I mean, the water lines are pretty easy to connect to. And if they break, they're real easy to fix. So um, not too, too concerned there. The major things would be septic or, or sewer lines and, um, the septic uh, spray lines, spray field lines, and the because those are you can't you shouldn't really be messing with those once you um, submit that design to the county and they approve it. They kind of need to stay where you said they were going to be. <laughs> That's a kind of a big deal because the county can come back later and be like, uh, "This is not where you said they were," and that's a problem. Mm -hmm. They can shut you down. So, electrical panel access would probably be paramount, and then you know, minimize the number of things that are obstructing that, that backyard uh, and size of the electrical panel. So if you know for sure you're going to be putting pool equipment in, maybe let your um, sales consultant know or the utility company know so that they can size it for the appropriate, the right size of amperage uh, so that, that that can function. Okay, perfect. Um, we have Yolanda asking, do we need our own land? Um, yes, you do. We do. We do not own any property that we have available to sell for residential homes. So you are going to need to bring your own your own land in. Um, all of our design centers, though, do have contacts to help you um, find property um, if you need it. We can refer you, and we also highly recommend LandsofTexas.com is a good place to start your your search for land. But to work with us, you will you will need to bring your own property. Um, Denise is asking, are there more options available that are not in a design center? Yes, there are. Um, the design center shows the majority of what we offer, um, like I was saying. So it's it's the packages that we have um, pre-negotiated with all of our vendors that are that cover the majority of our customers. So it's the things that are going to make the majority of people very happy. So we have all of those options. We can get other materials if there's something that you're interested in. Um, I do recommend trying to stay with the same manufacturers that you see that we carry. That makes it a lot easier for us and we would have to do you know one-off um price inquiries every time that you're picking something that's not um in our design center but it yeah, is and it's, it's, it's actually very rare that people end up needing to go outside what we have we have my opinion way too much in our design centers but uh that that's not to say that someone's taste could involve something outside that but you know for example um I'll take Dow tile as an example. We carry a whole bunch of, of Dow tile. There's more than enough stuff in there to, to make a beautiful home. That's very unique. Um, does Dow tile offer stuff that we don't have in our program? Of course they do. You know, probably thousands yeah. of things we don't have. That being said, it's not part of our program. Doesn't mean we can't get it. It does mean that it, there is going to be a different price to it because we've negotiated the program. Mm -hmm. um, it's a solid program. It's, we've had it reviewed by designers, you know, to make sure that we're picking the right stuff. Dow Tile knows the stuff they can get, um, that there's enough product available. And even when they do that, it still sometimes turns out that there's not. So um, yeah. all that to say that when you start getting outside of that of that program, I mean, you're looking at additional cost. But that's with any builder, even one that will tell you, oh, we let you just go directly to, you know, these floors and it's all custom. It's no different. They have a program mm -hmm. in place. Whether they'll tell you they do or not, doesn't it, that's irrelevant. We're at least telling you. There is a program in place. Um, you want them to have a program in place because it means that they've done some level of negotiating on your behalf to ensure that you're going to get the best price and you're going to get a product that's warrantable and you're going to get a product that you can get. So 
And you're going to get a product that you can put your tile next to your cabinet color and say, okay, these go together. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, but there are other options. I mean, you know, do we have every light fixture that um, our manufacturer makes? No, we don't have room to do that, but we have what works, what's repeatable, what's predictable. And again, more than enough choices to make you go cross side. <laughs> All right. Um, and we have a friend from YouTube asking, I noticed that each county area has a set of floor plans. Are there restrictions with building any floor plan in any area? Um, so no, every floor plan that we offer, we will build in any of the counties where we built. Um, there are some nuances in local code. Um, also, you know, if you're in a windstorm area, we're gonna we're gonna make some changes there. But yes, we do we do build every plan that we offer in every county. Um, the reason that you're seeing a different a different set for every county is simply has to do with pricing, um, and it comes back to what Eric was saying before when someone asked us about how much out of level um, is included, we have priced everything down specifically to the county, knowing what we usually encounter in those areas. So we're allowing for different levels of out of level in the foundation. We've also you know, made adjustments for energy code and just things that we know are different about that county, um, what the vent with the subcontractors in that area would charge us. So that's that's why we're showing it like that so that we can be as transparent as possible with you guys about what cost is. Um, but every floor plan is built in every county. Yeah, I, th I think what we're talking about, and I think it's Joseph Willis, he has the same question as well. Yeah. Um, it, you know, if I click on, for example, Grimes County, it shows plans in Grimes County you may love, and it shows like five floor plans. Um, and then on search our plans after the bottom right, Joseph, you can say find your, your find your floor plan. So it kind of just serves you up some plans. It could be based on your recent search history, it could be mm -hmm. based on plans that we've built a lot in that particular area. Um, so I, I can see where that'd be a little confusing. It's just plans you may love, but it, you can truly search any plan and build it in any county like that. So. Yeah. That was a much simpler answer to the very complicated question that I invented in my well, head. I wouldn't look. I wouldn't look. I'm like, well, that's odd. But so I want to validate my yeah. He's right. So the website is tuned to try to recommend plans to you that are similar to what you're looking at so that it's not showing you all 45 plans and across the whole the whole website. So that, that's Some what's happening Some of us there. don't like to be limited. We're ungovernable, Don. You don't like that. Right? I know. I know. We did not design the website for Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why it works well. <laughs> all right. Um, so we have Mary saying, uh, one more question. Uh, do you have to pick from one of your listed floor plans? Um, so no, you do not have to build one of our floor plans. Um, like we were talking before, if you did have a different idea that you brought into us, um, we would kind of go back to our floor plans to try to get you a price while you were with us to make sure that everybody is comfortable with it. But if you have an idea of what you want to build or you've, you've found something that you like online and wanted to bring it in to have us take a look at it, we would absolutely consider that. You do not have to build um, one of our designs. And you can also change our designs, um, however you like. So I definitely recommend going that route. If you found one that's close and you just want to make a tweak, um, that would be the best way to go. No doubt about it. And then we've got Tra Travis Sharon that he is pouring concrete awesome. Thursday in Wharton County. Awesome. Fantastic. That is wonderful. And that is actually the last question I see. So guys All start right. typing if you've got any other ones. Yeah. If you got questions, obviously drop those in here and ask, um, we can spend a little bit of time talking about, uh, uh you know, some of our in-person seminars that are going on. Uh, we're mm -hmm. cover a lot of this stuff. So uh, I know we have a few coming up this weekend. Dawn, where might those be happening? So we have seminars this weekend in Weatherford, Georgetown, San Marcos, Huntsville, and that's it. That's it. Okay. Katie's next. <laughs> so four, four of them this weekend all over the state. Um, mm -hmm. You can, you can. Come everybody's out covering something different. So. Oh, are they really? Okay. What are they we are, covering yeah. this weekend? What are we covering? So we've got Weatherford will be talking about um, preparing your land. So it'll be all about site prop. Oh, nice. Um, Georgetown is talking about the questions that you need to ask any builder that you're considering so that you can make sure that you're, you're talking to the right one. Uh, San Marcos is going to be talking about our easy buy financing program. You um, so you can learn more about that. I know we had a couple questions about financing, so that would be a good one. And then Huntsville is just doing the general, I am a brand new beginner to built on your lot. Tell me all the things. So Awesome. Yes. Yeah, so for any of you, Texas Grand Ranch, Republic Grand Ranch folks, that would be a great one to go and sit in on. Um, they are in Texas Grand Ranch. All those would be excellent to go. You need, you need, mm -hmm. you need to know all of the things. 
Um, again, they're also a great place to kind of mix it up with like-minded people who are at the same point in the journey as you. Um, their safety in numbers. People ask mm -hmm. good questions, like the the smart, smart people on here that are on here. These will be the, these will be the most these will be the happiest buyers. Am I right, Don? These will yes. be the happiest customers. Um, and the reason that these will be the happiest customers is because we have found we have a lot of data on this. The, the, our happiest customers are the ones that did all the research. The, mm -hmm. uh, the a well educated customer is the happiest customer because they they looked they've asked for the pitfalls they've asked what their responsibilities are they've asked what our responsibilities are um, they've talked to a bunch of other builders they've gotten all this information they've sifted through the inaccurate information i was going to think of a more crude term but i'm not doing that so they've 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 figured it all out um sorted through and yeah that's that's uh you just know what to expect this is this is a process unlike any other that you've been through um it is the most significant financial investment you'll probably ever make to buy a product that will take the longest to ever produce and you're watching it every step of the way so it can be you if you're not prepared and knowing what to expect it can be very stressful um and we're really looking to ease that for you guys beautiful well said Right, well, we did have a couple more questions sneak in. Yep, but um, you can yeah. ask your questions, put them in the chat, yeah. and we'll answer them. All right, so we've got Tessie saying, hello, just jumping on from Folsom, California. I'm Hubby back. and I are now looking at the Barton Springs B. We'll be coming out in April to view all the models from Waco to Bernie. Awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, we love and plan to include the alternate kitchen with a second island, the rear covered porch with cathedral ceiling, and the LaSalle's alternative bathroom upgrade. That is going to be an amazing house. I cannot boss. wait to see it. That's going to be beautiful. Beautiful house. Awesome. Yeah, I can't wait. Y'all are going to enjoy the trip. It's a beautiful part of Texas in a beautiful time of year. The mm -hmm. the, the blue bonnets will be out. Oh, here, there they are. You'll have the blue bonnets. They'll be rolling. All the wildflowers will be out uh, on all the Texas highways, particularly that area yeah. of, of central Texas, north central, all the way down to down 281 to into Bernie. That'll be one of the prettiest times. That is the time to come shop for Atlanta, Texas, by the way. That is a mm -hmm. great time. Yeah. August, not so much. So much August, definitely April. Yeah, not quite triple digits yet. Like it's it's gonna be yeah. great. It's gonna be great. Gorgeous. All right, we've got Ken asking if you're running underground electrical, how far is the max distance mm, from the pole? Great question, Ken. I'm I'm pretty comfortable, pretty comfortable uh, up to about 500, 600 feet maybe, but probably 500 feet is my comfort level. I, my my personal home, I'm 330 feet from my pedestal my transformer to my house um there is i mean there is some amperage loss um so but but that could be accommodated for a big enough wire um and so and yet i have aluminum wire running from my transformer to my house it's also bigger around than my thumb so it's perfectly safe and no issues and it's in conduit um at least it was mm -hmm. we buried it who knows probably i'm sure it still is so uh, <laughs> Anyway, all that to say, yeah, it, it can go a pretty good ways. I mean, we 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 rarely see um, where folks are building further away from the, the electrical source than that. Most power companies don't want you doing it anyway. Um, they're going to want to put the transformer somewhere relatively close. Um, I do know they get into some charges as they get you know the further on your property they have to go, the more work they have to do, whether it's overhead or underground. Um, there's, there's work there for them, but, and then from that distance, whether the transformer is in the air or on the ground from there over is, is kind of what we're talking about there. But, but I, I'd try and keep it less than 500 feet if I were you. Okay. Makes sense. And then he's also asking, what is the average build time these days? About 225 days average build time. So that's from setting forms till the house is completed and we give you the keys. What's not included in that would be the upfront due diligence, design, engineering, color selections, permitting, soil testing, site evaluation. That's about a four month period up front where it looks like nothing's happening, but there's really a lot of, a lot of stuff happening. But it's the land development portion of building on your lot. Mm -hmm. The part that's already done when you go into a subdivision or resale home and, and buy one. There's already you know, roads and streets and culverts and drives and permits and engineering and all the stuff that you think you're picking, they've already done for you. Uh, whereas in your case here, it's, it's, uh, we have to do that, that work up front. So great question. Yeah. Great question. Um, and Jason's asking, can y'all do speaker hookups for surround sound in the living room? Uh, we can certainly, 
request, request uh, excuse me, <laughs> request that. Um, if you have an AV company that you like or that you use before, we actually don't have a problem with them going in and doing pre-wire um, at what we call kind of the lull of inspection. So pre-drywall, um, there are going to be some, so we frame the house and then get all the mechanicals, which is your HVAC, your electrical, and your plumbing all in there. Um, and then insulate. There's some inspections that go on at that point. There's kind of a lull there. That's a great time if you have some kind of pre-wiring you want to do yourself um, or you have a, a co an AV company want to come in and do something like that. They're welcome to do that. Um, I, I highly recommend you communicate. You need to communicate that with your building superintendent. And then and the only the caveat is they can't tie into anything that our contractors, our, our electricians or those folks have done. Mm -hmm. So like no, no cutting wires and you know, pigtailing into wires or anything like that. But if they want to come in and run, you know, some, some speaker wire, you can do that. Or I highly recommend Sonos. Highly recommend all wireless, phenomenal sound, um, a whole lot less money, and you're not trapped to where those speakers are. You're not trapped yeah. in time with certain speakers. And figuring out how to cover up that hole later. Oh, dude, Sonos is so great. So great. Awesome. Um, so Jorge is asking, does Tilson do fencing or is that the owner's responsibility? We can get you bids on fencing, Jorge. And I think if I remember right, you're looking at Republic Grand Ranch. So yeah, we definitely have contractors in there that can do fencing. Um, double check the restrictions in your areas. This is broadly speaking. Uh, so for instance, I don't think you can actually have privacy fencing in Republic Grand Ranch, for example. And they aren't the only ones. There's plenty of other subdivisions that they don't want you putting up the old school, you know, cedar dog eared picket fence. They want mm -hmm. like a split rail fence or a metal fence, something that you can still kind of see through it. Um, and so they, they do have some, and it has to be, has to be approved in all subdivisions. Um, you, you'd have to submit to them exactly what you're putting up and what color is going to be all that kind of good stuff. And they have to approve that fence. So something to think about. Okay. Um, Tessie is asking a question on upgrades and options. Are they included in the final price or do we pay separately up front? Um, from experience from a million years ago, we had to pay separately and up front. That's right, Tessie. So in a, in a production subdivision home, um, they typically, any upgrades that you do at the design center, they make you pay, most of them, 50% of that. So let's say that you went in and spent you know, $50,000 worth of upgrades in the color room with wood floors and granite and plumbing and light fixtures and you know, pre-wire for AV and all that, they would want $25,000 of that up front. Um, we don't do that. We don't do that. So uh, th the reason they do that, there's a why to it. I'm not, I'm not disparaging them this time. The reason they do that is because if they put all that stuff in there and they have a much higher, what's referred to in the industry as a, a bust out rate, um, mm -hmm. you're, people are a lot more likely to walk on a production subdivision home you know, fo not follow through with the sale with the contract than they are on, when it's on their land. Um, you know, they have more like a 40 or 50 percent bust out rate, whereas ours is like once we start construction, it's like virtually zero. Mm -hmm. um, even prior construction, it's like 10 or 15 percent. Um, and so we don't they, they do that in case they have to sell that house to somebody else and they don't like all the stuff that the unique things that were picked on the front end uh, and they have to go in and either either cut the price to sell it or tear some of the unique things out that were done to put in normal sellable things uh, so that's why they collect that money i totally understand it totally get it mm -hmm. um tilson doesn't do that so you now you can i mean i, I say we don't you can add that stuff to your loan um or the upgrade stuff is gonna be in your contract that'll that'll just be in the contract. You don't have to put it down up front. We do have some customers that do want to pay it. Hey, I don't want to include this stuff in my loan. I don't want to finance that for 30 years. And they just, they, they feel more comfortable cutting us a check for it. That's fine too. Um, it's, it's really whatever you want to do. So long as it will fit in the appraisal, as long as it'll fit in the loan. So you've mm -hmm. got, you've got the number amount that someone can qualify for financially based on their income. And that's one number. And then you have the number that the bank will loan based on the appraised value. Then hopefully we've, could cover that if you want to, or or not in the next four minutes. <laughs> well, it's just just keep in mind when the, a third party appraiser is looking at your house, he cares that you have kitchen cabinets and that you have countertops. 
they don't give as much weight to how nice those materials are. So that's where we're talking that you might wear if it fits in the appraisal, like he's like, yay, you have counters. I don't really care that you have level six custom courts, you know, bespoke cabinets. Like they, that's where you start to not get the value back in the appraisal. Yeah. All right. Um, Mary is asking, uh, would someone be able to come out to my property and look and help us with the floor plant design? We are wanting our focal area in the front, like our great room. We have 10 acres. Yeah. I mean, we, we can probably Mary. I don't know that, that it's going to make a huge, huge difference. If you're looking for the view to be out the front, that is something that a design center consultant can do from in, in the office. Um, you know, but if we want to narrow it down to one or two designs, we don't, we don't like to come out to the property if, if there's not at least a design or two that the customer has it narrowed down to, um, mm -hmm. because it's, it's, it's not as simple as, I mean, you to do it properly. You need to lay that house out correctly, square it with either the fence line on the side or with the road or with the neighbor. Um, and so trying to do that with more than two houses, uh, it, I mean, it could take eight hours to do that. So, um, to do it correctly, I'm not saying that, you know, so just be real careful with the chuck of the truck coming out there being like, yep, looks good. Looks like we can do this, do this. Do. Like if they don't get out of their truck with tape measures and a laser transit and the whole shoot match, it, it is a waste of your time. So um, all that to say that, that we'd be glad to come out and take a look if, if that would make it a little easier. We need to know exactly where it is because obviously we have different availability in different areas. Some areas we could probably mm -hmm. do that in, in a couple of weeks. Some areas it may take more like four to six weeks uh, to be able to put that on, on the calendar to do that. So let us know where your property is. Maybe get us to choose a private message. Okay. All right. Dustin is asking, do you guys build in Frio County? Yes. Or I guess we do now. Right. I just said so, yeah. We do now, yeah. Um, Eric's saying late to today's show, but nevertheless, greetings from Beaumont. Hey, Eric. Howdy. Um, we've got Ken asking, is spray foam better at lessening outside noise than traditional fiberglass? Is it possible to put spray foam on the internal wall of one room in my office? I work from home and I need a quiet space for my kids. So, yeah, it'll help. Um, it, it's, it's better than fiberglass. No doubt about mm -hmm. that. Um, if you really are looking for better interior insulation, I recommend a staggered stud or an offset stud application because uh, and i don't have a i don't know the one i know i see you looking you were going to draw i was going to draw a picture i was going to draw a picture but this this salesperson keeps their office way too neat and tidy and hides all their stuff smart smart person so um i think i remember room. the picture Hold yeah on. you do so basically uh ken what, what we would do in a case like that long story short sound we can spray all the insulation between the studs that we want to sound can still travel through the stud itself um it's not a big deal on the exterior because traditionally there's not a lot of stuff making noise that close to your home, right? Um, for example, even in, in a situation like this where I am, if someone was running a weed eater or a blower outside here, it's still going to make a lot of noise. That, right? Is that the right picture? Perfect. Yep. Yep. So those those pictures of your, your top down view, it's a bird's eye view looking down onto a wall. Uh, let's say we would do a six inch toe plate instead of a four inch. So it, it's sort of a, four inch interior wall, it'd be a six inch interior wall. And we would literally offset the studs so that they are not touching uh, both of those sheetrock walls. And then you insulate between those and that would stop, that sound, serves as a barrier to stop the sound waves, lessen the sound waves. Going it's not gonna be soundproof. You know, this isn't uh, Universal Studios where we'll be recording in there. Although you'd have a lot better shot doing it here than you would just just putting insulation in between there. So that's that's how I recommend doing it. You do lose two inches out of one of the rooms, um, but it's it's not a huge huge deal, and that's a really simple solution to to make that a lot quieter. The other thing is I uh, don't have a door on that room, so maybe go in and out the outside. <laughs> that would help. help. <laughs> um, all right fair enough yes mention that to your to your designer yeah he said he just uh, saw that stagger on youtube yep yep just mentioned that's what you're looking for yep all right we've got jeremy asking do we build in livingston texas yes absolutely all day we've got jim checking in from wisconsin hey jim, hey, jim. saw your son last week <laughs> 
I do too. Yeah, you <laughs> We've got Philip asking, can you design a floor plan from scratch? This would be our forever home and probably around 5,000 square feet on store, one story, looking to purchase land in North Lake, Texas. Yeah, Philip, I'll be perfectly honest with you. And this is what a good builder would do to tell you that's really out of our wheelhouse. 5,000 square foot, one story custom home from design from scratch. That's not what we do. You would, in this particular case, want to find a true design build firm. And I mean firm, um, not just a builder, someone who can show you a portfolio of work that they have done in this. Because I know it doesn't sound like a big deal to go from 35, 3,900 square feet up to 5,000. That's a big jump. Um, mm -hmm. That is a much bigger jump than from the 1,800 to 3,600. I know that sounds crazy to people, but I'm telling you, it's a big deal. Um, you start getting into 5,000 square foot single story homes and you're talking some very large spans. You're talking different types of foundation systems because you're spreading way, way out there. Um, so I would highly recommend finding a true design build, probably cost plus custom home builder who does like one to three projects a year. Um, and that they have a dedicated superintendent on site at your location and that they have and they can show you again a portfolio of work or introduce you to customers that you can have a candid conversation with um, that took that they went all the way through from design consultation um, all the way through and that's my advice okay makes sense and jeremy is asking do you guys use open cell or closed cell spray spray foam we use open cell spray foam, Jeremy, um, because in a residential application, you want it to be able to breathe. You want it to be able to get that moisture out. Closed cell is good application for big commercial buildings, um, big retail centers, you know, these 15, 20,000 square foot retail centers where it's, you know, a Jersey Mike's and a Subway and a, you know, T-Mobile store or whatever doing Closed cell on those is fine because you got storefront doors. They don't have the air changes per hour restrictions that we have. They don't have to be as tight of a building as we do. Mm -hmm. They usually have drop ceilings, right, with the ceiling tiles so that it's a lot of breathability. You do not want to do closed cell and something as tight as a residential home these days. You will have moisture issues. Okay. All right. Tessie is asking on foam. She hears a lot of emphasis is on keeping the cold air from the AC, but I'm missing what is the benefit for keeping in the heat for the winter months? Uh, it will do it. It will still keep the, the heat in. The, the difference, Tessie, is we're not having to do it like Wisconsin or Minnesota or the Dakotas or Colorado is where they're needing, you know, R38 in their walls, R40 or 50 or 60 in their attics. Um, because truly the time, like we're, right now, this time of year, depending on, like I have two AC units on my house, specifically this happened this morning. On one end of my house, my AC was going. On the other end of the house, the heater was going because of the way the sun was facing. So like it's right. super, and, and my point being that it's very with spray foam, especially you're not that heat state, whatever the ambient temperature is inside the house, it does a much better job of keeping it in because you're not losing it to the outside. Um, we mentioned keeping the cold air in so much because it really is like in some of our areas, 10 months out of the year, that's all that matters in other areas. It's eight or nine months out of the year. That's all that matters. So that's the one you want to put most of the emphasis on. Um, the, the cost to heat air um, is a lot less expensive than the cost to cool and dehumidify hot air. Um, right. Because your AC is working a lot harder to extract that moisture out of the hot air, you know, from, gosh, let's say March through October in most of the areas that we build. Um, it's the AC running and you're it's trying to, extract the moisture out of the air and cool that air down um, from hundred degrees down to 75 degrees, let's say. So that's, that's why we talk about that more often, but it, it mm -hmm. the, I guess the short answer would be if you can take care of that summer stuff, the winter stuff's going to take care of itself. You don't have to worry about it. Right. You're not going to have to fight very hard to get it heated up in your house. Plus there's other things running in your home that create a lot of ambient heat. Um, for example, four or five, you know, you get two or three people in there, they all have an average of 98 degrees, right? So their bodies are heating up. You got refrigerators, they create heat. All your appliances create heat, your microwave, your oven, your water heaters, all of those things generate heat, which is why we're really never worried about pipes freezing inside the home. Because even mm -hmm. if you lost power completely, the odds of it getting below freezing inside of one of these houses with, with 
you know, everybody running around in it, it as long as the power will be out, it, it's almost zero. Um, so that that's really why. Yeah, it's really it's really just about that the our audience is much more concerned and, and the majority of energy costs in Texas are trying to keep things cool versus the the two weeks of the year where we have to worry about staying warm. Yeah. Um, warm is not usually a problem. No. <laughs> All right, guys, I think that might be it for real. Very, very cool. So thank you all for watching. Thanks for coming and joining us. We really, really appreciate that. Um, mm -hmm. I want to go back to Jorge real quick. He did say so the dog doesn't venture out. Talk about the fences. Um, yes. Uh, what we can do in those situations, what I've seen that what we, I did on my own home, is I have a, a three-rail fence, um, but we have a little dog. And for whatever reason, we want to keep him around. So when I say we, I mean the royal we. This this we wants to keep the little dog. So um, you love your dogs. Don't act like, like you don't. They're logistical. Yes, you do. Nightmares. Well, one of them. Never mind. She's okay. So the golden <laughs> retriever. He's cool. The little one, not so much. But uh, you can get a smaller gauge wire. Um, I think ours is a two inch by four inch wire mesh it's like four feet tall and it comes in rolls and you we rolled that behind the actually between the four by six posts and the rails of fence so um he can't escape he's so old he uses echolocation anyway he can't see where he's going so he just like bumps in the walls as he walks around looking for his food bowl and trips over water bowls and anyway but you can still do it with a with a three rail and have a, a, accomplish it where you're not going to let the, the little critters out all right, perfect. Okay, now that is the end of that. All right. All right. So, folks, don't have to end here. Obviously, we have a website, twenty four seven. It's open. Uh, we build all the houses in all the counties. We've established that today. Um, we can help you there. We want to uh, answer all those questions here. We have new home specialists standing by to answer all those questions. Um, yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love anything that brings my wife joy. That's there the, you go. The, the that is the right family. answer. That is the right answer. <laughs> uh, if it brings her joy, I will participate in keeping it <laughs> for a time. The other thing, 12 locations open seven days a week. We absolutely want to see you come out there, engage with us. The closer you get to talk to somebody, the, the area that you're building in, usually the they have better dialed answers than even we can give on here. Um, mm -hmm. They've got those local surveyors you can reach out to, propane companies reach out to, land clearing specialists to reach out to. You can do all that. Again, I ask for a private message for those if you wanted someone to come take a look at the property. It'll depend on where, whether we can do that or not. But um, in, in most cases, we'd be able to accommodate that. What else? Come see our seminars. We've got live in-person seminars going on this weekend, every single weekend, just about. Come out and see us there. Um, we got progress on the Rio Grand Ranch model going down. We got progress on our model homes in Angleton, Texas going down. Um, so a lot happening around the state. I know San Marcos is going through a little bit of transition there with their sales center. So we got a lot of things going on, folks. Come out and see us. Uh, did I miss anything, Don? I think you got it all. Okay. All right. Well, hey, great news. If we didn't, you can catch us next week. We'll be back to see you again. Yes. But until then, we generally soon hope to make you part of the Tulsa family. We'll see you guys later. Bye, everybody. <laughs>